Andrew Bone, Senior Recruiting Analyst for BamaInsider.com, part of the Rivals.com network. He joins us every Wednesday for the Bama Football Recruiting Report. Good morning, Bone. How are you? Morning, Gary. How are you? Doing great. And we got some some big news to start off with this morning. And that was the commitment uh, earlier this week from Jeremiah Alexander. Outstanding prospect from Thompson High School in nearby Alabaster. Uh, 2022 prospect. So he can't sign until December 2021 at the earliest. But this is a guy who physically, uh, he's a sophomore in high school. He'll be a junior in the fall. Is already physically mature. I mean, he's a load. He, he was a dominant player this year. Highly rated in all the recruiting rankings for 2022. And uh, a guy, Bone, who unlike, I think you sometimes worry when prospects commit this early and you're like, there's no way it's going to stick. But with this guy and his family and the process that they went through to come to this decision, I'd be very surprised if he ever wavers. Would Would you agree with that assessment? Yeah, I'd, I'd be surprised. And, you know, I, I tend to worry more about kids who uh, are maybe out of state that commit that commit early. Uh, you know, guys that you know may be from, <laughs> like, like Trimble Country from Texas or, or North Carolina or, or, or somewhere like that. You know, that's, you know, I'm not too concerned with, with in-state kids uh, who commit early because most of those kids are, um, you know, they're pretty solid throughout that whole process. Now, you know, a kid like Jeremiah Alexander is a little different because he has been recruited uh, for such a long time. He's been recruited since his freshman year. You know, schools were offering him as a true freshman, uh, had several scholarship offers, uh, took a lot of visits. I mean, he, he, he took multiple visits to Alabama, to Georgia, to Clemson. Um, so it's not like, you know, he, we're not just looking at him and saying, oh, well, his recruiting process will really begin, uh, you know, here in the next few months or next year. His recruiting process started a year ago. So he's been taking those visits and enjoying the process and, and getting all the information that he needs on every single one of these programs. So, uh, you know, he came to that decision this week that he was ready to go ahead and commit. Um, you know, Coach Mark Freeman at Thompson High School, you know, told him, he said, hey, if you're ready to commit, uh, you know, you need to pray about it, and if you know God leads you to that decision, you need to go ahead and make it. Uh, you know, other schools are still going to be there in case anything were to happen, but if you feel like in your heart you're 100% committed, you need to go ahead and do it. So he went ahead and made that decision. You know, told me he still probably will take some visits and um, you know uh, go on some more trips, but I, I'd be stunned if if he ended up uh, you know going anywhere else. He's top player in the state of Alabama for 2022, so. Obviously, um, you know, a lot of schools are still going to continue to recruit him, but uh, but I think he's he's very happy and, and, and very content with his decision to uh, to Alabama. Andrew Bone with us for the Bama Football Recruiting Report. Uh, let's uh, get some analysis from you on him as a player. I guess the thing that sticks out to me watching him play some this this past season is how physical he is uh, at the point of attack. He reminds me, even though he may be a little taller, I'm not sure, but it reminds me a little bit of a Ryan Anderson, his ability to take on blocks. Uh, play the run and also put pressure on the on the uh, passer and he's thick like Ryan in fact his lower bo- his body uh, lower body his trunk is huge um, I say all that bone to get to this question he's a, I think he weighed at 235 uh, wow. when he was at Alabama I could see him easily uh, as I said just a sophomore in high school at the moment easily adding if 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 he wanted to if the coaches wanted to at Alabama see him adding 40 50 pounds and, and being a down lineman even though he's very athletic he's got a lot of versatility because of his frame and because of his pass rush set but also a big physical kid too uh, pick it up from there and and what he is right now as a player and what you think he has the potential to be at the next level yeah, well, you know, I think as of right now, you got to just have you have to kind of wait and see how he develops over the course of the next uh, you know year or two, um, especially before he gets to Alabama. And then obviously, once he gets to Alabama, um, you know, once he gets in the, into that strength and conditioning program and, and starts working out with, with the team, you know, how much how much weight can he handle? How much weight? How much is he going to get? Uh, you know, how much is he going to grow? Uh, you know, right now he's about six foot two, um, two hundred and thirty five pounds. Now. Uh, I don't think he's got a lot of room to spare. You know, you don't really. I don't think he's going to be a six foot two, two hundred eighty pound kid. Um, yeah, I see him more in the six two, you know, two fifty five, two sixty five range where he could, you know, that. And I think that's kind of the max right there. I think he ends up potentially being an, an edge rusher, uh, an Anthony Jennings, a Ryan Anderson, you know, maybe a Jack Linebacker uh, type player once he gets to Alabama. Now, 
you know, obviously right now I think he, you know, would love, you know, I think the projection is inside linebacker, but I, I think he ends up potentially playing uh, that Jack position because he's a strong kid. He's very physical. Uh, as you mentioned, you know, had a great junior season. I think he had 121 tackles uh, on the state championship team. Um, you know, very quick, you know, can chase down ball carriers from the backside. Um, you know, and like I said, I mean, he is really, you, know, you know, very similar to Ryan Anderson. I think he's a little bit faster than, than Ryan is and, uh, you know, a little bit more polished at this stage uh, of his career. Um, you know, Ryan got it better as, as his, uh, you know, he was probably a little bit better when he was a senior, as a, you know, a lot better as a senior as opposed to when he was a junior, whereas uh, Jeremiah Alexander is just so good right now as a true sophomore so uh you know i definitely see him as a um, you know, a big time player uh at the next level but i think he's going to end up you know probably being that jack linebacker type player uh once he gets to alabama you mentioned him being a uh, an in-state guy and and from a terrific program state championship program from a year ago and we saw this past uh recruiting and signing class a, a heavy dose of in-state players it looks like it's gonna be a pretty good uh potential cycle in 2021 for in-state guys. I mean, Alabama recruits nationally, but uh, uh, it appears that um, in the last couple, three, four years, that there's been a good cycle of in-state guys, and Alabama's taken advantage of that. I thought clearly uh, this past recruiting cycle, they they won the in-state battle against Auburn handily, and uh, we know, Bone, how it works. You want to go where the football players are, but when it's a good year in-state and you're the University of Alabama, you want to you want to control the state, right? Oh yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, obviously they they had a great uh, recruiting class this past year, and um, you know, already starting off in in 2021 with a good commitment and uh, in Deontay Lawson out of Mobile Christian, and then uh, 2022 with Jeremiah Alexander. But you got to continue to build on that. Um, you know, you're looking at the uh, you know you're looking at the 2021 class, and yeah, you, know, you want to get guys like uh, uh, DeQuincy McQuincy, uh the uh, you know, Kool Aid, as everyone calls him, out of uh, Penzen Valley, a number one player in the state. You want to get him on board. You want to get Dylan Brooks, uh, outside linebacker out of Hanley uh, High School, on board. You want to, uh, you know, look at Tim Keenan and uh, Jeremiah Williams, uh, both defensive players from uh, uh, from Ramsey High School in Birmingham. So, you know, those are some guys that you know you can get. You get those guys on board. You know, that really helps add on to uh, our build for next year's class where um, you know there's some really good players in the in that 2022 class as well all right uh, junior day over the weekend and you wrote about some of the guys that were here um how, how did that go bone well i thought it went pretty good um you know junior day is a little different these days than it than it used to be whereas uh you know everyone was kind of focused in on uh who's all coming in for junior day because there's 70 kids on campus well now it's you know now it's more like you know, 10 or 12 kids or 15 kids that are that are going to be visiting for junior day because kids are coming in uh, kind of sporadically throughout the throughout the entire spring and, and summer. And, you know, Alabama recruits kind of at a national level. So, you know, it's a little hard to get, let's say, a guy from Texas or, uh, or California or New Jersey, or, you know, on campus for a specific junior day. Those guys are going to come in, uh, you know, maybe during their spring break or maybe during the summer. But, uh, you know, they had a pretty good group of kids in town, some guys they were they're heavily recruiting. Um, you know, they had three guys from, uh, from Louisiana who they really like a lot. Uh, Sage Ryan is a Rivals 100 cornerback. Uh, Kane Williams, uh, Rivals 100 safety. And uh, uh, Jordan Gilbert, uh, a three-star def- uh, cornerback, uh, safety. Can kind of play all over. But those three guys, three top guys out of the state of Louisiana, were all in Tuscaloosa, all heavily recruited by Alabama. Um, you know, spoke to all of them. They all had a you know, really great time in Tuscaloosa. Um, you know, obviously, it's probably going to be an Alabama-LSU battle for all of those guys uh, when it comes down to it. Um, Chambry Jackson is a, uh, a name that I think Alabama fans need to start to get familiar with. He's not a commitment, but, uh, but he's a four-star defensive end uh, out of Boone High School in Orlando. Uh, he was in Tuscaloosa this past weekend, had a great, uh, great time. Uh, was really impressed with the strength and conditioning coaches. And, you know, that's one thing that um, that really stood out about a lot of the guys who visited uh, Alabama on Saturday was uh, the time they spent with these uh, the new strength and conditioning coaches and, and learning about them and, and seeing, you know, what they're about and seeing how they kind of run their program and, 
And uh, I mean, I mean, every single kid that I talked to just raved and raved and raved uh, about the new strength coaches at Alabama. So I think that's a very positive sign uh, for Alabama moving forward, especially um, you know with top kids coming in throughout the next month or so and, and into the summer, uh, knowing how how much uh, you know these guys are spending time with them when they're coming on campus, and uh, and, and just the fact that. You know, I used to always hear about Scott Cochran after every single visit um, you know, and how much uh, time he spent with these guys, uh, these recruits who were on campus, and you were trying to wonder, all right, well, we know what Scott Cochran was all about. You know, how are these guys going to you know, be with these kids when they come on campus? And it seems like it was, it's, it's been a home run so far. You know, I mentioned this last week, and um, I want to bring it up again because um... – the lack of numbers in the 2021 recruiting class in terms of commitment so far, and Alabama's nowhere to be found, obviously. And now with uh, Alexander committing, you've got as many players in the 2022 class, <laughs> one, as you do in the 2021 class. You're still not uh, concerned or bothered by that? Well, you know, you kind of keep, keep kind of waiting to see when when that, that commitment's going to drop. Um, you know, I'm not too concerned just yet. I don't think Alabama's too concerned. Um you know, do they wish they probably had a couple of commitments? Uh, absolutely. Um, uh, I think they're going to kind of continue to wait and see what happens throughout the spring. Now, you know, some of these guys we kind of expect, you know, Drake May, you know, you know, we kind of expected him to go to uh, to flips in North Carolina or at least reopen things. Uh, Latrell McCutcheon was a little bit of a uh, surprise, to, at least to me. I, I thought he would, uh, you know, remain solid, just take some visits. But, uh, you know, those are two decommitments for Alabama in the last, uh, you know, last 10 days. But you know, as of right now, just one commitment, Deontay Lawson. Now, probably the one big kid that um, that has committed elsewhere that, that I thought they had a great chance with was Jordan Hancock, four-star defensive back out of North Gwinnett High School uh, in Georgia, uh, announced his commitment to Clemson this morning. Now, I'd heard some really positive buzz of the course of the last uh, month regarding uh, him in Alabama. Uh, Coach Saban uh, had a conversation with him and his mom last week. Uh, on the phone, and, and I just had continued to hear a lot of positive buzz and, uh, and announced for Clemson today. So I think that's probably the first really major loss for Alabama uh, as far as kids they were heavily pursuing that they felt like they had a good chance for us. So we'll kind of wait and see how, you know, the rest of the spring goes. You know, they, I think they really need some, uh, you know, Jeremiah Williams, you know, great commitment, big commitment, but it's in the 2022 class. They really need to gain some momentum in 2021, and I think they're ready to get get another commitment or two on board. Yeah, I'm with you. I think that uh, you obviously want to be careful about uh, how you go about putting these classes together these days, uh, especially with early commitments. But at the same time, I think I think uh, you know, fan base is certainly anxious to, to get to, to get some commitments in this 2021 class moment. I'm sure Alabama has it uh, has it uh, under uh, control. Now you mentioned uh, Baloo and Ray and. Uh, said that you feel like even with Cochran leaving this new infusion of of ideas and analytics that they're bringing is going to be a big positive in recruiting for Alabama? Yeah, I think so. And, I, you know, I think Scott Cochran leaving, I, I think a, a lot of it was overblown in terms of national media coverage, um, you know, basically saying it was the end of Alabama's program. You know, we heard, we heard that when Kirby Smart left, um, you know, Alabama years ago. And uh, certainly hasn't been the end of Alabama's program at all. And uh, I don't think Scott Cochran leaving to become a position coach over uh, over in Athens is going to be the end of Alabama's football program because it's been around for a long, you know, been a top program for a long time, and uh, it'll continue to be a top program for a long time. So I think these new guys are uh, are, are you know really exciting uh, in terms of you know just talking to different you know talking to different recruits who've been on campus over the course of the last uh, you know week. You know, just talking to these guys and seeing the excitement that they have about these new strength and conditioning coaches and the way that, um, you know, there's a strength part to it, there's a science part to it, and uh, it seems like it's, it's, been a, it's been a big hit so far. So continue to see how that goes throughout, um, you know, the year, especially with these, you know, the big-name prospects that are going to be coming in town and the amount of time they get a chance to spend with, with them. And, and, and we'll see if, um, you know, if, if these guys become a big factor uh, in their recruitment, because you know, a lot of times when I was interviewing recruits, uh, you know, about their decisions, you know, they would always mention, you know, Nick Saban. They'd always mention uh, position coach or, or coordinator, but they'd always mention Scott Cochran as well. So we'll see uh, how big of a factor these guys are 
in a lot of these guys' recruitment uh, moving forward. All right. Good stuff as always, uh, Bone. And uh, our listeners, I know, anxiously await your appearance uh, every week on the show. And I like to give you the opportunity just to uh, update them on the different ways uh, that they can get uh, your recruiting information. Absolutely. Well, you can follow me on my Twitter handle, uh, at Andrew J. Bone. Uh, you can follow our YouTube channel. Just go, go to YouTube, search Family Insider, hit subscribe. Didn't cost you anything. You'll be a subscriber to our uh, Bama Insider YouTube channel. You can also go to BamaInsider.com, which is part of the Rivals.com network. Sign up today because we got spring practice rolling around, tons of spring visits, summer camps coming up, a lot of great uh, information coming out, and um, got a great team over there at BamaInsider.com.